Well, I'd like to now shift gears for a few minutes and share with you Esri's work. We see our work as fundamentally creating powerful tools, useful tools, practical tools that help you do your work better. And in the process of that, address some of the greater challenges that are facing all of us. We do this with products. And I'm sharing with you now, briefly, a little bit about our product strategy so that you can see this, see this clearly for your own organization and your own work. Our fundamental focus has been in GIS with this product called ArcGIS, which supports the GIS community and the very rapidly growing online mapping community and also location analytics. In recent years, we've opened up that environment more for developers to extend the fundamental platform. Several years ago, Scott Morehouse, one of my colleagues, envisioned also creating a new kind of system, a geo-enabled system. These aren't exactly GISs, they're independent systems, but they feed on and work on infrastructure created by GISs. Today we describe this portfolio as as characterized by or framed by something we're referring to as the ESRI Geospatial Cloud, which is the, the portfolio of software and SaaS offerings that we make. I'm going to start by going a little deeper with ArcGIS, and this is advancing rapidly with the integration of many data measurement tools and computing tools and advances in science. We, this is part of our work, ladies and gentlemen, is to watch what's happening with new tools like uh, the integration of BIM or the integration of sensor networks or IoT and also the advances that we're making in computing, not just faster machines, but distributed machines. Uh, the, new, the new frontiers of microservices and paying a lot of attention to interoperability and so on. And then in science, wow, that's a large thing to keep track of. But our work has been around spatial temporal tools and bringing that into the fundamental uh, technologies and also real time, real time GIS. That's what the, the essence of the nervous system is all about, where we collapse the time from measurement to decision. ArcGIS is a comprehensive platform that I suppose everybody in the room is quite familiar with. But our vision for it is that it's open and services-based, like dial tone, and it's distributed, and it's extendable, and that it supports not just large organizations or teams, but also individuals. At the base of ArcGIS, we attempt to organize all the different types of geographic knowledge, the data, of course, and the maps that you create, the models, the apps. These are organized under something called a portal. But we also pay a lot of attention to organizing people with identities within groups, the kind of mantra of, of social media today. And these are organized under a common user experience where people can search and find each other's work appropriately with the right kind of security in mind. ArcGIS integrates many types of data, actually all types of data. Of course, geospatial data like imagery and maps and so on, but also tabular data, unstructured data, IoT data, LiDAR data, and BIM, building models data. It brings these together through an abstraction layer to create a common language of maps and 3D scenes and fundamental layers of features. These can be mashed up and integrated dynamically. So think about what I was saying about distributed networks of information. We need a powerful integration tool. That's what this, that's what this does. And it supports multiple kinds of systems within organizations. One of them is the system of record keeping. This is like updating vegetation or updating parcels or updating utilities. It's a transaction system. Second is a system of analytics or insights. This allows us to explore data, model data, 
and understand it. And the third is a system of engagement. This is through maps and apps, bringing people in across the organization and beyond. And more recently, the integration of real-time has made this come alive. Think of this in a distributed environment and you'll get the sense of when we talk about nervous systems. ArcGIS by design is fundamentally an open platform. And we do this in various ways, by supporting open standards, by now integrating open science libraries, things in the AI world and beyond. Also being open for developers to access the data and the tools. And also a major piece of it is now open sourced in GitHub, providing us tools, providing users tools to be able to extend and make successful systems. I'm going to characterize very quickly, actually, the kind of research and development that goes on. And some of you know that we spend, um, well, we spend all your money. <laughs> Sorry about that, but we do it for a good cause. <laughs> about a third of our revenue goes into ongoing R&D, which is about three times the normal amount of an IT company. And I'm going to give you kind of a report at the high level of what we've done in these different categories. And then you'll be able to have a reference system as you go through the week, the different workshops and sessions. But these are, these are the list. I'll start off with content. ESRI's ArcGIS Online platform now has over 7,000 ready-to-use maps and data sets, as well as millions of data sets that you have shared collectively. And it makes billions and billions of maps every week using this content, base maps and so on. And this content continues to improve. There are many new and updated services. This event uh, caused us to want to publish some new things. So everybody's been working around the clock. Let's get it ready for the users conference. There's a new updated imagery map for the world. There's a new base map from National Geographic Society, beautiful, there in the lower right, just published last week. There's new updated land cover, and we have now integrated OpenStreetMap so that when an update happens in OpenStreetMap, within minutes, it's served into the vector tiles of the open base map in online. And many others, you can glance through these, and there'll be sessions on this. I just want to say thank you for all of you who are contributing to this, because this is not Esri's content, it's really the reorganization of your content and serving it out for practical use. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, I really appreciate it. This is, yes, <laughs> we thank each other. In the world of mapping, smart mapping has enabled us to be able to make amazing maps. Almost anyone can make beautiful cartography these days across the web. And our advancements here have been in 3D data-driven visualization, very fast performance, and some new mapping types. This one on the upper right is exploratory mapping and will be made available in the new map viewer that's coming out in the fall. However, my favorite <laughs> My favorite is story maps. I'll just ask, how many people made a story map here in this room? Uh, I'm greatly disappointed. It should have been unanimous. Okay, never mind. I'm just trying to be dramatic to get your attention. Now there's been over a million story maps published, and almost 3,000 new ones happen every day. And Alan Carroll, whose house, by the way, is flooded, he had to go back to Washington, D.C. this morning was one of the principal authors, along with the development team, of this amazing technology. And it's just skyrocketing exponentially. He, together with his development team, uh, has built a next generation story map device. And, and uh, it's being released at this conference. It integrates mapping into the basic storytelling component. It's easier, and it's also mobile-first focused. Moving on, highlighting some of the development work that we've done for you in the last year, I'll start with mapping and cartography. 
We've made improvements in symbology and annotation and processing of cartographic data, improved support for production mapping and charting, and also fully integrated ArcGIS into the Adobe Creative Cloud so that designers that are interested in working with Adobe Cloud can pipeline in real geographic data to make their maps better. This, is, this has been very popular in the Adobe community. It's gone to number four in terms of popularity around the world. In the world of field operations, we are now locationally enabling all aspects of field work, from workforce management and dashboards to help planning. This year, this conference, we're introducing a new capability to do location tracking with something called Tracker, but also supporting navigation and data capture. Notice on the far right, there's a new collector-like app. It's called Quick Capture. And this is for people like myself, thick-fingered, you know, I don't want to figure anything out. I just push a button. When I see something, bang, I can take a photo of it and send it immediately to the system. And this is becoming enormously successful with people like flying helicopters and they want to boom, 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 or driving in a car, they want to see rugged situations or difficult situations. It's very interesting. And also improvements to Explorer, the simple mapping tool that you can take out into the field. We'll return to these apps in some of the demos in a few minutes. The center of many of your work efforts are around data management. And here we've made improvements in editing, introduced a number of stronger industry models for utilities and the summer parcels. You have asked for us to be able to tear off a piece of map, put it into a device and take it to the field. And we now support that with vector tiles. One of the popular things that has happened in the last year has been the integration of Autodesk's tools, engineering tools, into the fundamental capabilities of GIS. This means that engineers can be fed by, whether they're in building design or in engineer, civil engineering, be fed by your geographic work. And finally, we've made some significant enhancements and improvements in providing the comprehensive data management to access all kinds of databases, but now databases in the cloud. In the world of 3D visualization, here are some of the improvements made. BIM as a scene layer. My favorite is the center one, little effects, like shimmering water or sunlight reflections. But you can pick across this portfolio of improvements. Also, I, I like the augmented reality, virtual reality, put on the glasses and see things. This is, this is a neat stuff. 3D isn't just for visualization, it's also for analytics. And here are some of the new analytic tools. You can glance through them. Here, my favorite is volumetric, looking into the oceans, as Sylvia Earle keeps asking me, poking me to do. Don't forget the blue stuff. We need volumetric modeling. And by the way, she's here someplace. Uh, I'll just say, hello, Sylvia, how are you? Also, geologic modeling. These 3D capabilities of visualization and analytics are not just one app, but they're, they're across all apps. That's one of the magical capabilities in free 3D visualization tools like Earth, but also in City Engine and Pro and the Scene Viewer. Another center point for much of your work is spatial analytics. And here, there's lots of new work done in introducing temporal charts so we can see through time what's going on and some new spatial statistics tools. One here I'll cut, cut my attention is balanced zones. This will be very powerful in redistricting and reapportionment activities in the next year. New raster functions, particularly focused on hydrology modeling. And then there's a whole bunch of interesting things for improved processing. Here I'll call your attention to the tool to history, tool history to model automatically tool. You get what this does? I'm typing in functions and it's building a model for me dynamically. 
I thought I would get applause for that, but my gosh, it's supposed to be cool. Or also, the ability to turn models into Python scripts. This is another good one. For those of you interested in big data, in the enterprise, we support very large data sets, like in the billions of features. But this year, with Pro, you'll be able to scale up through parallelizing processing to deal with millions of features in your little, in your desktop. An introduction of new learning tools, deep learning tools. But my favorite is the Python, Python notebooks. Hosted Python notebooks are very powerful because they allow us to integrate, integrate distributed, distributed services and data, build scripts and share them. All the open science libraries are suddenly available to us to programmatically script with analytic services in ArcGIS and script them with data sets all over the place, big data, data lakes, etc. And the implementation of Python notebooks is done so that you can create an item. This means I do a lot of programming and I can share it with somebody else. And finally, many of you are familiar with ArcPy, the modeling tool in the desktop. This is now available in the notebook server, turning geoprocessing into a service. That's, okay, you're supposed to applaud for that one too. Come on. <laughs> All right, well, maybe not as popular. Look, this is closely associated with a very popular buzzword thing this time, uh, at, at this time, artificial intelligence. And people will often ask me, what are you doing with AI and machine learning and deep learning? Here, our approach has been to directly connect ArcGIS Pro to the environments that now support this, open sourced environments, but also to connect them through Python notebooks so that we can leverage the ML tools and other geoprocessing tools in our toolbox directly with these beautiful environments. And I'll simply say about two weeks ago, Paki in Kuwait, I don't know if anybody's here from there, but they were able to successfully take an image, train it with their existing building footprints and get about a 95% accuracy on identifying and building new features, pulling them right out of the image. And this is pretty cool, I know. And earlier, I mentioned the Ordnance Survey. They're doing exactly the same thing. They're taking the models that they train in the UK and taking the complete learned model to developing countries to be able to make base maps almost automatically. It's, it's transformational for our field. It has, yes, it's worth the plotting for. I mean, their work is, is really great. I'm going to move on now to talk about imagery. Imagery like this kind of raster geoprocessing is closely associated. Our work here has been in developing a comprehensive system for imagery and remote sensing, and it has five pillars. First, being able to support bringing in any kind of imagery and traveling with ArcGIS Online are many imagery data sets for you to use. Second, image management. And here we've made an interesting improvement. Notice this diagram. Historically, we've used image mosaics to be able to dynamically process imagery in our system. But this year, we've introduced a new thing called an image cube, which allows us to cube up imagery into very large cubes, spatial temporal cubes that pre-process the imagery so you can pan and zoom through it very rapidly. And then there's improvements in analytics and map production and visual exploitation. In the world of visual exploitation, we have released a new capability, which is a web-based structure, structured observation management technology, which allows us to search on the web for imagery, bring it up, and then exploit the imagery. Exploit the imagery means really photo interpretation, like drawing features on the image, and then storing those features in a database to do analytics on it. This supports 
both a GIS view of imagery as well as image space, so it supports both kinds of communities with powerful exploitation tools. So, thanks very much. <laughs> it's a cool thing. <laughs> I love you, man. It's good. It makes me feel a little more secure. <laughs> similar, to, similar to imagery, real-time data analytics, reading in sensors from the IoT and pipelining them into the geo event server is increasingly becoming popular. And we have been working on this in the last year as well, making it more performant, making our capabilities of geo event server more performant, more robust, more scalable. The diagram will show that not only geo event server for direct integration for alerting and analytics but is there, but also a parallel technology called the geo analytics server, which is able to take very large reservoirs of data that has been stored about these sensors and then do deep analytics. This is becoming very popular in places like cities that want to know what's going on. Situation awareness. But there's a few slides here, both looking at illegal fishing in Argentina, but also the port of Rotterdam with its port 42. They're, they've wired up the whole port and not only the port, but also these shipping containers that are moving around the world. I've talked a lot about capabilities, perhaps talked too long. These capabilities are implemented into the standard products, Enterprise, Online, Pro, and the solutions with them. I'll now cover these briefly. The ArcGIS Online platform is kind of like leg number one. It's a complete mapping and location platform, and it has now over 7 million users. This platform makes literally billions and billions of maps every week. These are the new improvements that we've made in that platform. You can glance through them, find your favorite. My favorite, of course, is the new story maps that Jennifer just showed. And coming will be a new map viewer. You'll be able to see this in workshops this week, but it'll ship in the fall. Other ones you might find very interesting, like hosted imagery and the integration of IoT directly into ArcGIS Online. What this means is that you can have some sensors, connect your sensors, and bring them right into ArcGIS Online. This is going to be very powerful for people who don't wish to store imagery, real-time imagery, or sorry, real-time events in their own infrastructure. Pro is the second leg in this triad of technologies. Pro is becoming very popular now. It's made major progress in a number of areas, editing, supporting for rich utility networks. And this summer's release, which is actually last week, it supports the parcel fabric parcel networks. Yeah. Okay. That's and coming, you can look through some of the capabilities. Again, my favorite is Voxel, three-dimensional, n-dimensional uh, space support. And Pro can be extended in a variety of ways with analytic tools, specialized tools that integrate focused capabilities into your desktop world. The new one here is for unstructured data. This is tabular data that may have a geo name or a geo code or a coordinate in it, and it organizes it right into a map for immediate use. The third leg of the stool is ArcGIS Enterprise. This is a server. It provides comprehensive GIS for organizations. It's perhaps one of our most important technologies. It supports all of these capabilities, and here we've made improvements as well. The big one for me is at this summer's release, we've been able to reduce memory requirements by 95%. This is a big deal. <laughs> and this is the release where we introduce machine learning and AI in a server environment. Coming over the next year will be ability to do containerization and microservices. 
large organization management and intelligent search. Now, this server runs in commercial clouds, it runs in private clouds, it also runs in your infrastructure, and its architecture is what's interesting. It's designed to be modular and massively scalable. This means, well, already some of you are working with hundreds of cores, and some of you that are actually working with thousands of cores. So you can scale this up to almost, an, I, I hate to say, an infinite side because that's stupid, but you can really scale it up. And it also has these modular extensions for imagery and, and real-time and, and big data analytics, and now the notebook. Again, I'll just, everybody seemed to like this dramatically reduction of memory. Well, what that means is that you have the ability to have more services and also less memory. So some of, this is a big thing actually. Some of you will be interested in the monitor application which provides for, for IT people alerts and warnings and root cause analysis and performance reporting. That's very, very intriguing indeed. For me, the heart of the nervous system is this ability to enable distributed systems. Look at the diagram. I can share and synchronize data happening in one place at a different place. That means if I update my map, I can share that over the web and have somebody else's map updated. Or if I build an app, I can share it. This is enabling distrib distributed collaboration, this kind of idea of a system of systems. And this will also enable taking GIS to the edge. In the winter, we released a new licensing capability. And many of you have asked for this. It's basically RTS user types, which allows scalable, flexible licensing across your organization. And one of the licensing types is for the interesting product called Insights. This is a rich environment that allows people to understand their information using location analytics, mapping, analytic tools, charting. And here we've introduced a bunch of new capabilities like network or link analysis, connecting people in space and time. And op open it up more for R integration and Python integration. Good. <laughs> okay, look, you're... <laughs> That's great. We could spend a lot of time together, really, you and I. We're going to become very good friends. <laughs> um, ArcGIS solution templates are a collection of open source tools. They're data models, they're workflow patterns, they're add-ins, and we have a team of about 70 people working on these. Uh, if you haven't availed yourself to them, check them out. They focus on particular industries, and this, this winter, we are releasing something jointly with the National Geographic Society that focuses on protected area management. More about that this afternoon. App builders. You'll know that app, web app builder is one of the most extensively used for building geospatial apps with no programming required. There's now over 700,000 apps that have been built on this platform. Experience Builder is our next generation of web app builder. And it'll be shown in some of the workshops here. It'll be coming out in the winter of this year. It's built on JavaScript API. And it allows you to do exactly what you do in Web App Builder, but also it has powerful tools to integrate 2D and 3D. And you'll be excited by that. Stop this clapping or you're going to interrupt my ability to finish on time. You see, it's a problem, really. <laughs> ArcGIS for Developers is designed for extending our platform for creative developers. And we paid a lot of attention to this in the last couple of years. There are five basic ways to extend our platform. One is now Python notebooks. You've seen that. Another one is Pro add-ins. Another one is JavaScript API, which allows us to extend over the web. Another one is runtime SDKs. And finally, the Python API allows us to program and access the full system in creative ways. This is about, this is about supporting 
the creative world, not only startups, but also the enterprise organizations who wish to really integrate and extend what we're doing. My favorite, and this is JavaScript API. This is enabling server-based data to be developed in web browser environments, a kind of client-side mapping, like 2D mapping or 3D visualization, and also analytics. So mm, pay attention to this. I've talked a lot about ArcGIS in the product sense. I'll not talk for just a moment on geo-enabled systems. This is interesting to me because it's not a GIS, but it's geo-enabled infrastructure-enabled systems that are focused on particular workflows like indoors or engagement or urban planning or mission awareness or, or business. Briefly, the business analyst, which was our first effort in this, started almost 25 years ago. This packaged up all the relevant data that business people really use, demographics and so forth, connected it with workflows for analysis, and wow, this has been a great success. I mean, 70, I think it's 70%, 70% of the Fortune 1000 use this as a platform for analytics and making smarter location decisions. The second one is introduced just earlier this year. It focuses on bringing GIS into indoor spaces. And we'll see a powerful demonstration of this after the break from Exxon Corporation, who's implementing it for their worldwide headquarters. It's about wayfinding and supporting operations management, security, and so forth. And for real estate organizations, this is going to be empowering people who have to take care of rooms and find, find where to go through building complexes. The third of these started here in California with the initiative of Mayor Garcetti in Los Angeles. It's about a system for enabling community engagement. That's connecting a city, for example, with their citizens. It includes a fundamental building block of open data. And this building block with Hub is now being used by thousands of organizations to make their data open and available around the world. Like 150,000 data sets have been shared with this. And then Hub also supports initiatives. It supports the ability to build a website that engages people. And then it organizes community through various apps of times. You can glance at them there on, on the right. Urban, uh, okay, I'm biased about it. Urban is my favorite of these. It's a system that's going to revolutionize and transform planning. That's saying a lot, but watching this technology emerge, uh, I, I actually believe it's gonna happen. It integrates with interactive visual tools, highly interactive tools, proposed projects, land use plans, zoning, and all the geographic indicators that are necessary to create smart cities in the future. You'll see some demonstrations of this in a few minutes. And finally, Mission, which is not actually available yet, it's coming in the winter, but we, we wanna share it with you. This is about mission planning. What is a mission? A mission is like a fire, or an emergency, or um, you know the uh, Super Bowl, where you have people deployed, and you want to have real-time peer-to-peer communication around maps. Somebody leads this mission, and we have situation awareness. And I know some of you have built these kinds of systems before, but uh, this one, this one is uh, sort of like out of the box. It just works. You're not supposed to clap anymore. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> Look, I've, I've covered a wide swath of tools. You're going to go to workshops. You'll see new trainings that go on during the week. But I'll close with, with what's next. This is a list of research topics that our teams are focused on right now. This is an opportunity at this conference to tell them things that we're missing or to give them feedback about how we're doing. We're strongly committed to continuing to release software releases incrementally and then just make continuous improvements in these frames of core GIS and also these geo-enabled systems. And of course, we'll continue to 
focus on quality and performance improvements and integrate these new innovations into it.